Many of you may have heard that exactly a week ago, today, a week ago, someone called Uri Zohar or Rabbi Uri Zohar died here in Israel. So what is the importance about Uri Zohar? I don't know, in the States you've probably <laughs> never heard about him, but here in Israel Uri Zohar used to be or still is a very famous figure of his past, what he did and what he turned into and at the end of the 70s he kind of split is or he <laughs> kind of separated um, the way Israelis thought or the nation as a whole. So who was Orizor? Orizor, Orizor when he died last week, I think he died of a heart attack or something, he was 86 years old. He was born here in Israel and he became extremely popular in the 60s and 70s. He was a very famous actor, producer and comedian. I've actually never watched <laughs> one of his movies. It's not really my style. But um, he used to be extremely, extremely famous. He used to be a huge star here in Israel. And he was totally secular. He, had, he was Jewish, but he had nothing to do with Judaism at all. I, I think he lived in Tel Aviv or whatever. And his best friend was Arik Einstein. And Arik Einstein was, until he died in 2016, I think, or 2013, he was, I think it was 2013, I'm not sure, a few years ago, um, he was a very famous pop singer here in Israel, but he was also, I think he was also participating in a few movies, I'm not sure, but his pop songs uh, some are really poetic, uh, very famous in Israel until this day. So the two used to be best friends. And one day, not only one day, it was a process, a longer process, as when you become a Baal Tshuva or Baal Tshuva, when you uh, start the process, you know if you've done it or if you're about to do it or you are in the middle of it, you know that it takes a longer period of time. It doesn't go from one day to the next and it shouldn't be this way from one day to the next. It's supposed to change um, your personality and the way you act, behave, your goals, your everything. Your entire personality is changing in the tshuva process. And by the way, I just want to mention it. Those who were doing tshuva or who were entering the process too fast, there is a high chance that they will never remain a Baal tshuva. They will go to, uh, to become or to return uh, to the chiloniut, to, the, to become a chiloni, uh, a chiloini, um, a secular Jew. So you should always take the process slowly, at your own pace, and never get talked into, you know, <laughs> uh, into a speedy decision or something. So one day at the end of the 70s, as I said, it was a longer process, Uri Zohar started to become a Baal Shub. And because he was so famous, and so famous for being secular, Israelis just couldn't grasp his idea. He had money, he had fame, he had women, he had, I don't know, maybe also drugs, I have no idea. This is just a guess. So it's sex, drugs and rock and roll, I don't know, maybe. He had everything, <laughs> you know, someone could accomplish. And suddenly he started his tshuva process and he started like slowly, like um, with kashrut, you know, and Shabbat, and slowly, slowly. And um, Israelis were shocked. 
it was really like they didn't know what to say and some people got really really upset some people got really angry and started to hate him some people were of course they were happy some people said you know it's just like a, a mood it won't last too long he won't remain religious and he's gonna come back so there were all kinds of opinions and a lot of people were really angry at him and his best friend Eric Einstein turned away from him he was also secular and he could not understand his best friend so they kind of separated they had basically nothing to do with each other and Eric Einstein even made a song about this and he called it Shalom Chaver like uh, goodbye friend the problem was that two children of Uri Zohr and two children of Arik Einstein they married so they were a family and they because of the marriages and the grandchildren they stayed in touch in a way and also Arik Einstein's wife Alona she beca became a Bala Tshuva and she left her husband Arik Einstein for, because she became religious but she never had anything like she knew Urizo of course and they were friends but they there was nothing going on between the two and um, it was in the 90s in the I think in what was it in 1997 I think 1996 90, 97 I guess I met Alona Einstein at a certain place where I went to study. I went there, it was a seminary, I went there. It was here in uh, Kiryat Matasdorf, which is a from, from neighborhood here in Jerusalem. So I went and uh, someone introduced me to her, one of those girls where I went, you know, it was about uh, Judaism and everything, all kinds of topics. In the end, I didn't join the seminary for various reasons, but I went a few times just to look around if this is for me, it wasn't. But when I was there, one of the girls introduced me to Alona Einstein and I had no idea about the whole story. I didn't know. So the girl said to me, this is Alona. <laughs> and and um, I said, oh, hi, Alona. And she was an elderly wo woman already then. She didn't really fit according to her age she didn't really fit into the seminary but whatever it was for all kinds of ages and it turned out she was a little older than everybody else i don't know in her 60s maybe late 50s 60s i don't know and uh so the girl then said to me this is alona and i said yeah okay i <laughs> got her name and she said she repeated like this is alona and i said yeah i i heard you and she said, don't you know the story? This is Alona Einstein. So the, she taught me this whole story. And uh, I think uh, Alona Einstein already passed away a few years ago. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is like they remained a family, Arik Einstein and, uh, and Uri Zohar, due to their kids because they married each other. But the two guys, former best friends, had actually nothing to do with each other. When Eric Einstein was very ill and he was already in hospital and about to die, Uri Zohr went to visit him. But I don't know if Eric Einstein then was still, like if he, I think he was already unconscious or something, I'm not sure, but he went to visit him. So anyway, so Uri Zohr made Shuva in the late 70s. It was a longer process. And if you are interested, you can read his story. Uh, you can read his book. I looked it up. Uh, it's on Amazon in English also. And uh, he tells about how he got into this, how he got interested in Judaism, how he first rejected everything and thought like, and he told everybody, oh, you are stupid, religious and everything. But then he listened to some lectures and then he started thinking 
as many <laughs> of us, so to speak, know how everything started. And he went to Esher Torah, to the Hebrew program of Esher Torah here in Jerusalem, where he learned a lot. And he made up his mind and he remained religious until last week, until he passed away. He became a rabbi. I don't know where he got smicha from. I don't know. I have no idea. But he always remained very famous in this country. Everybody knows who he is or has at least heard about him and about his background, where he came from. Uh, in the late 90s, I think it was, he started a television show where he talked about tshuva and everything, but it didn't last very long. I, d I don't remember wha why or what the reason was, but um, he lived, I think, not too way, right, far away from the Machane Uda market here. And he had a lot of people around him, also Baalei Tshuva, uh, many followers, and who took him as an example, like <laughs> um, they really admired him for what he did. And uh, you could not see the difference anymore when he was still secular. He looked very different from when or after he did Tshuva. I put a link uh, below this video uh, from Wikipedia so it gives you further details in English and it also shows pictures of Uri Zohar before and after so to speak I don't want to use it here in the video because all the pictures I found are copyright and I don't want to get in trouble with using any copyright pictures so I put the Wikipedia link uh, into the description box so, what do I think about Uri Zohar and what I did? Well, I don't know his movies. I don't know him from before. I only know him from after and only from the media. I've never met him as far as I know. But let me tell you one thing. Um, when I did like tshuva or I wanted to become from I was not interested at all and not looking for any Baal Tshuva movement, Breslav or Chabad, it, it, it doesn't matter what. Any Baal Tshuva movement where all the Baal Tshuva are and a rabbi who is also probably a Baal Tshuva or something like this. When I was in this process, I was looking for people who were born from. I was interested in that. I did not want to associate with other Bale Tshuva. I mean, yeah, of course you talk to them and everything, but I wanted to, I concentrated on really not joining, but associating and going to lectures, shiurim, whatever, um, Uh, given by rabbis or whatever or even the audience where you have or to synagogues because you also have Baal Tshuva synagogues here in Jerusalem but I was I, I only associated or wanted to associate when it came to religion to being from Yiddishkeit whatever you name it with born Jew uh, <laughs> with born from Jews who were born this way already. I was not looking for any Baalei Tshuva movement. Uh, I want to give you the reasons. First of all, I wanted to do everything right. I wanted to do everything perfect and not always being, uh, being surrounded by people, you know, as a Baal Tshuva, you have lots of problems. All kinds of problems. I'm going to make more streams about this a little later but I didn't want people surrounding me like I had my own problems as everybody has but I didn't want to surround myself with people who are whining all the time about this problem about that problem I have my own problems 
I have to concent I have to focus on and I don't want to listen to everybody else's problems. And then at least in Israel I had the experience that when you do tshuva so from born Jews have, uh, have they are much more patient with you than other Baalei Tshuva. Other Baalei Tshuva are very pushy. And then they start. You know what? One week of Tshuva and they already feel like they know everything. And then they tell other, others what to do. Oh, I learned this and the Pasha here, the Pasha there, and what I learned and what I know. And how, look how great I am and all doing all the mitzvahs. And oh, you know what? It makes me sick until today. <sighs> So I couldn't listen to this and they don't have any patience with you because everybody wants to be so perfect now from now and this goes on my nerves when everybody's telling you what to do that's Bali Shuba you know there's someone coming up at you and he's been <laughs> two days <laughs> you know he listened to one lecture decided you know and he's telling you things what to do and this is like not all Baalei Tshuva are like this. I'm not generalizing, but you know what? Many are like this, and I don't want to hear this. I have my own problems and my own issues to deal with. And according to my experience, sorry, I have to clean my nose. Um, according to my experience here in Israel, here in Jerusalem especially, um, Jews who were born from are much more patient with you. Because they see you as a newcomer, you don't know much, you're trying to learn, you have your issues, you have your, your own mistakes, and you do mistakes, and okay, slowly, slowly. Whereas other Baalei Tshuva, you know, they are pushy and everybody wants to be the best. So these are the main reasons, and I wanted to learn, not only this Baalei Tshuva sometimes made very easy, I wanted to learn like I wanted, really wanted to advance, to learn, learn. You are like a sponge, you are sucking everything in, all this uh, knowledge about Judaism and everything. It doesn't matter what. If it's Musa, if it's Halakha, if it's Pasha, if it's uh, Talmud, if it's uh, Midrashim, I don't know, whatever. You are just like a sponge. And sometimes like Baalei Tshuva Shiurim are very easy. And I don't like this. It's like simple. Okay, so I don't like this. So I try to associate with Jews who were born from, from, from birth, F of B. And not so much with the Baalei Tshuva movement. Of course, here in Jerusalem, you can't really escape Baalei Tshuva, but I did not join any movement and I'm not made for a movement because I have my own way of thinking and I'm very introverted. I'm not this group person. And I just don't follow like sheep, everybody else. I have my own opinion, sorry. Um, so this is why Uri Zohar, for instance, also other rabbis, Baalei Tshuva rabbis, uh, whoever, whatever direction in Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox Judaism, I'm not really into joining this Baalei Tshuva, blah, blah. Uh, some people need like a, need like an approach they need like to be told what to do in their lives and they like to join movements especially when they are new to from judaism because they are looking for i don't know a certain kind of like not lifestyle a way how to lead the lives now as a from jew and they are looking for especially they are looking for a kind of home where they can feel at home. Of course, it makes a difference when you join a Baal Tshuva movement. So everybody's like you and people are welcoming in a way because everybody's the same. Whereas when you um, associate more with um, from from birth, um, most of the time you are an outsider because you were not born this way, you're not, you were not born into from society. So you always, 
you're an outsider now and you always remain an outsider and sometimes you just feel it because people behave in a certain way <laughs> you sometimes e they even tell you for instance you would not in many uh, groups from from birth city groups whatever litvish even national religious like mizrahi you as a bal shuva would not get a shidduch uh, of someone who is from from birth unless someone is already divorced has mental issues or has any kind of issues so then you may have a chance but you would not get someone um, I don't know someone I don't want to say normal but you know what I mean you would not get someone as a Baal Tshuva from you wouldn't get a shidduch from from birth um, you're just not being offered that you would get the shidduch like uh, if you go to Shatran, Shatrani um, you would get someone else who also did Shuva or converted to Judaism mostly another Baal Shuva uh, sometimes maybe someone from from birth who is, uh, who is divorced <laughs> divorced many times I don't know who has problems mental problems health issues whatever so it does make a different difference in this respect and when you do tshuva at first you don't notice it the certain kind of behavior of from from birth jews but it doesn't take too long until you notice the difference because you are a Baal Tshuva it never really bothered me because I knew what, was get, what I was getting into I did not have any demands or expectations and as I said I'm not a group person I'm not joining any group uh, I know people but you know I'm not joining any community if I go somewhere I go somewhere whatever my mood is but I don't have anything where I constantly go I constantly associate with I like to like uh, hop along like sometimes Toldot Aaron sometimes Chabad sometimes I don't know what uh, I don't really associate too much with the national religious but uh, when I go to I also go a lot on the Chagim I go a lot to uh, the Litvish whatever but I'm not <laughs> I'm not associating with only one group or only one rabbi or rebel whatever um, I like to um, have teachings from all kinds of groups I also went to Sakma um, I don't know I like to get any knowledge from different kinds of movements I'm not the person who would say you know what tomorrow I'm gonna join Satma or something I'm not I wouldn't be happy with that only have one Rebbe or two Rebbes in Satma no <laughs> I'm joking yeah. but uh, not only to have one Rebbe deciding or something I like to have several opinions and make up my own mind in the end I do listen to other people but I also have my own mind and I decide according to what I think not according to what a rabbi thinks but I do listen to many perspectives let's put it this way and then I make up my mind but uh, as I said like many people Uri Zohar had, had followers but um, whoever feels like doing tshuva or looking for something looking for an approach so if he needs help if he feels more comfortable within a Bale Tshuva surrounding atmosphere so I have nothing <laughs> against it he can join he's free to join it's just not for me because I feel much better much more comfortable in a from from birth environment because I also learn many more things and I don't have to listen to you know oh I'm so perfect I'm a Baal Tshuva and 
and doing this mitzvah and that mitzvah and why 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 this goes on my nerves so I just want a normal surrounding and I do not listen or it doesn't bother me that many from from birth Jews especially in the Haredi movement also sometimes national religious but let's say in the in Haredi society when they consider you to be an outsider it doesn't bother me I do my stuff I do what I can and I don't do what I don't what I can't do you know everything at a certain pace sometimes more sometimes less and I don't have the need to show everybody how great I am I do whatever I can and <laughs> sometimes not but uh, sometimes more sometimes less but I don't feel the need to impress everybody and to <laughs> scream it out loud how great I am uh, I don't feel the need I do this for myself and of course for God and because it's halakha or something but I, I keep quiet I'm not running through the streets and you know hello look at me I'm so great I'm not um, but this is what I wanted to say about Uli Zohar I think it's a huge huge decision what he made and that he really kept his way his religious his strong way until the very end so he was very convinced he was very honest and um, I accept it what can you do it's very you know it was very brave of him especially at the end of the 70s to go you know against his previous life and even against certain parts of Israeli secular society he was very brave uh, unfortunately he died I didn't know he was already 86 but uh, this is how life goes <laughs> everybody of us each of us has to die sooner or later well we will see but this is you know it's not easy to be a Baal Tshuva and um, you have to make up your mind and think about many issues and each of us in his life has people even the parents or siblings who do not agree to this who may have grown up reform and then they say why do you need to eat kosher why do you need to keep Shabbat and all this halachot and it's a waste of time and it's you know out of fashion and everything so it's not easy but the most difficult is to stick to it and not to feel the need I know at the beginning of the tuba process everybody is so excited everybody's so much into it so excited telling everybody oh look what I learned and everything Shulchan Aruch, Aruch Shulchan, whatever um, so everybody is has like this kind of excitement and after a while it just disappears and you have to deal with this and you have to make up your own mind about how to run your life and how to continue your goals and everything and you should as I said in the beginning you should never rush and you should never throw out friends or family members who are not from but uh, I'm going to talk about more tshuva issues in the upcoming streams so thank you very much for listening and uh, I hope you learned a little about Uri Zohar about I don't know Israeli society and uh, how it works here in this country because it's very different from the United States or from any country in the diaspora <laughs> Israel is very special and Israelis have their own mentality that works very very different from yours abroad <laughs> okay so have a good day and again thank you very much for listening <laughs>